Hello everyone, Sobro New of GNA Reviews here, and before we get into the video, I want to take a quick minute to thank this video sponsor, LD Player. LD Player is a great Android emulation option for those of you who are looking to play FGO on a PC. You can even get frame rates up to 120 FPS. And for those of you newer players who plan on re-rolling these summer banners, LD Player supports playing multiple accounts simultaneously. So if you're interested, please do check out the link in the description down below and download LD Player today. Now. Onto the video. As a famous game once said, I want to take you for a ride. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a servant spotlight for the phantom thief that's guaranteed to steal your heart, Summer Carmilla. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers that how you utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 4 star servants. So if you're ready to ride in style with Carmilla, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. Now, on to Carmilla's stats. Carmilla has a max HP of 10,476 and a max attack of 9,651. As a rider, she unfortunately has the lowest HP in her rarity, but her attack stat ranks among the top in her class to compensate. Outside of her class, Carmilla's HP is still very low for a 4 star servant, but thankfully she does have slightly above average attack. When it comes to her command cards, Carmilla has 4 hits on her quick, 4 hits on her arts, 3 hits on her buster card, and 4 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.52% and a star rate of 9.1%. Stat wise, Carmilla is very offensively focused, but her attack stat isn't as exceptionally high as other DPS servants. Her NP gain and star generating, however, are exceptional, mostly due to her high hit counts and quick and arts based deck. Taking a look at her skills, her first skill is Femme Fatale False Rank A. This skill has between a 50 and 100% chance to seal one enemy skills for one turn. It also reduces their defense against crit damage for three turns between 30 and 50% and it grants between 5 to 15 crit stars, all depending on level. Her second skill is Phantom Thief's Calling Card Rank A. This skill inflicts a delayed debuff onto one enemy that will drain them of NP charge and increase the NP charge of your entire party between 15 to 25% after a turn. It also reduces the enemy's crit chance between 20 and 30%, both depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Mistress C rank EX. This skill absorbs all enemies HP and heals Carmilla between 1000 and 2000, and it reduces their defense for 3 turns between 20 and 30%, both depending on level. As for her passives, Carmilla has Independent Action rank A, which increases her crit damage by 10%, and Presence Concealment rank B, which increases her star generating by 8%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Carmilla has a Quick Arts deck with Quick Quick Arts Arts Buster and a Quick Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Testarossa Maiden. It's an AoE quick attack that deals damage to all enemies with between a 600 and 1000% damage modifier depending on level. It also inflicts buff block status to all enemies for one time, lasting 3 turns, and it reduces their quick card resistance for 3 turns between 20 and 40% depending on overcharge. As a Master Thief, Carmilla will do an excellent job of stealing your time if you plan on farming for her ascension mats. For level ascension, she needs 15 stingers, 5 bloodstone tears, 11 snake jewels, and 10 seashells. Stingers are best farmed at the Field of Reeds in Babylonia, where they have a 62% drop rate. Bloodstone tears can be found at Shinjuku to Chome in Shinjuku with an 18% drop rate. Snake jewels have a 38% drop rate at the Chasm in the Earth at Agartha, and seashells have a 40% drop rate at the Observatory in Babylonia. For skill ascension, Carmilla needs 8 Bloodstone Tears, 30 Stingers, 60 Stakes, and 60 Spinal Fluids per skill. Stakes can be farmed at the Gallo Hill in Salem, where they have a 67% drop rate, and Spinal Fluids have a 65% drop rate at Shinjuku Station in Shinjuku. Every once in a while, DW tries to do something completely different from normal and makes a servant that has a unique skill set or gimmick that doesn't really exist anywhere else in the game. And Rider Carmilla is one such servant. While she may not appear to be too different from the typical DPS in terms of stats, having very low health and good attack, it is worth noting that her star generating is very strong thanks to a combination of her deck, her passives, and her hit counts, and her NP gain is also absurdly strong, on her arts cards in particular. But where Carmilla's uniqueness really comes through is in her skill set. Her first skill, Femme Fatale, features a wholly unique debuff that lowers an enemy's crit resistance by 50%, as well as skill seals them and generates 15 stars for the party. Critical Resistance Down is a new mechanic found only on Carmilla, and as you can guess, it works similarly to a crit buff 
in that all crit damage done to the enemy will be increased by 50%, which makes it a pseudo or conditional party-wide crit buff. And a 50% AoE crit buff is nothing to scoff at. It's a significant boost to all crit DPS, made even better by the fact that the skill also provides a small star bomb, making it the perfect skill for setting up Carmilla or other party members for crits. The skill seal is heavily situational, however it can come in handy for some boss fights. Another fairly unique skill belonging to Carmilla is Mistress C. It's an AoE HP drain that also lowers enemy defense by 30%. At max rank and with 3 enemies on the screen, this skill amounts to a 6000 HP heal for Carmilla, which isn't a bad amount of sustain. But the real star of the skill is that AoE defense down. 30% is a pretty large debuff, especially when it's paired with her crit resistance debuff. Between these two skills, Carmilla can potentially increase the parties as well as her own crit damage by a whopping 80%. But even outside of crit teams, that 30% defense down does a lot to help with general DPS, since it can be a situationally better charisma. And speaking of helping out the party, Carmilla's last skill, Phantom Thief's Calling Card, is a delayed debuff that drains NP charge from an enemy and charges the party's NP gauge by 25%. It also lowers enemy crit chance by 30%. The crit chance down is nice to have and it can be useful in some niche battles, but for the most part the NP charge is the selling point of the skill. A 25% party-wide charge is even better than what most dedicated supports can offer, and it can help enable NP spamming with Carmilla, making it easy for her to loop or assist other servants with looping. Furthermore, the drain is extremely useful for stalling out enemy bosses, giving Carmilla even more good utility for challenge quests. On the downside though, that NP drain and charge does have a one turn delay, so unlike Helena's NP charge, it doesn't help as much for farming. As such, I would recommend leveling Mistress C first for the general increase to DPS, followed by Femme Fatale for more crit damage, and then the NP drain last since it isn't as useful for farming as other NP charge skills. However, Carmilla's skill set is very versatile, so you can really justify any skill order depending on what it is you want to do. Carmilla's Noble Phantasm is an AoE quick attack that inflicts buff block and lowers enemy quick resistance. Damage wise, Carmilla's NP is very weak, which limits its viability as a DPS or farming tool. However, just like with Osakabe Hime, the strength of this Noble Phantasm lies in its utility. Carmilla is able to cripple enemies with a good quick resist down debuff and lock them out of buff themselves. And since she can spam her NP, Carmilla can easily stack the debuff or even perpetually block enemies from buffing themselves. Depending on the team comp and the enemy, this can be a tremendously strong form of utility. And that's what Carmilla offers in a nutshell. Her debuffs can provide a team with significant buffs to DPS while simultaneously crippling enemies. Between her NP and her skills, Carmilla can provide over 100% bonus damage to quick crit teams in particular. And as an offensive servant herself, she is more than capable of utilizing her own buffs. Carmilla's star weight is among the highest in the game, and her star generating is excellent, so she can easily set herself up for some consistent critting. And because of her own debuffs, she can hit for good damage without having to sacrifice utility like most other semi-supports do. With Carmilla Rider, you get the full package. She can buff her team, debuff the enemy, and deal good damage all at the same time. Her unique set of rare skills like buff block, skill seal, and NP drain also give her niche utility for hard countering some bosses, but Carmilla's uniqueness is a double-edged sword. While she can be incredibly useful for some fights, she's also completely useless in fights where enemies have debuff immunity or resistance. All of Carmilla's kit revolves around debuffing enemies, so if she's not able to do that consistently, she has nothing else to offer, and debuff immunity is fairly common for late game challenges. Going along with that, Carmilla's kit can be generally awkward to use since it really only works in specific team comps with other quick crit servants, which isn't exactly a popular category. Carmilla's lack of hard defensive skills and her low HP can also hamper her effectiveness in longer, more difficult content as well since she is prone to dying quickly. 
For team comps, as I mentioned, Ryder Carmilla works best in quick crit teams. You want to use her as either a semi-support for stronger crit servants, or as your main DPS. As a support, she can work very well with high damage quick crit servants like Ku Prototype, Okita Assassin, and Yalter. Ku Proto is a very strong free-to-play crit servant with short cooldowns, so he can take advantage of Carmilla's high uptime debuffs. Okita Assassin likewise can benefit from not only Carmilla's debuffs, but her NP charge as well for looping. And Yalter is a great pickup against bosses since Carmilla can significantly amplify her single target burst damage. Of course, Carmilla can also function as a DPS, in which case she works well when paired with supports who can buff her crit damage like Caesar, Chiron, and Osakabe Hime. Caesar provides all the crit damage and stars a crit servant could want, and Carmilla's heal can offset the demerit on his buffs, while Osakabe Hime and Chiron can do a good job of buffing Carmilla's crit and quick damage and providing additional utility. Carmilla's bond CE is Iron Maiden Summer. It increases her NP damage by 30%, and it has a 10 percent chance to inflict skill seal on an enemy. An interesting and unique bond CE, but ultimately it's not worth using over other CEs that help Carmilla with supporting like 2030, Seaside Luxury, Midsummer Moment, or Dangerous Beast, which all help with star generating for the party. For DPS, go with CEs that maximize Carmilla's quick and crit damage like Gem Magecraft, three anglers, imaginary around, or an army marches on its stomach, depending on whether you want more crit damage or if you want to rely more on your quick card. I also recommend using Looking Up at the Starry Sky once it comes out next year. It buffs quick cards and P gain and generates stars, so it helps Carmilla on all fronts. As for command codes, go with anything that buffs crit damage on quick cards like Phantasmal Horse. Overall, Carmilla Rider is one of the most unique and versatile semi-support hybrids that we've seen in FGO in a while. She is a strong crit DPS in her own right, but she also has enough utility to provide allies with significant buffs and debuff enemies without sacrificing DPS on her end. And she has a ton of rare and useful skills that come in handy for some niche situations, like buff block and NP drain. On the downside, her kit can be awkward to use, and it isn't always the most useful for general purpose situations. She lacks any real defensive skills, and she is absolutely hard countered by enemies with high debuff resistance or debuff immunity. So all in all, Carmilla Rider gets a B plus from me. Carmilla is a bit of an experimental semi-support that won't be the best fit for every situation. However, in situations where enemies can't counter her debuffs, she can be an exceedingly strong crit DPS that provides powerful utility and buffing to the party, making her a premier offensive support for crit teams. And those are my thoughts on Carmilla. She doesn't really play into the meta, so I feel like she's very overlooked and she's a bit underrated. But she's definitely effective in her role, and the swimsuit doesn't hurt either. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Baroni out. Later.